Now, I've said it before on this programme, but I'll say it again. One of my favourite albums of last year was Arto Lindsay's The Subtle Body. I just love its understated menace, its simple blending of Brazilian rhythms and studio experimentation. It's so laid back, but at the same time so intense. And for me, it was unexpected coming from the New York noise guitarist who was in the original Lounge Lizards lineup, and on their first album didn't manage to play a note of conventional guitar. So at the end of last year, I was pleased to meet up with Arto Lindsay while he was in London. We talked about his latest album and some of his other musical interests. Money, money, money. What makes you so sure? What makes you so sure? Soul animal. Honey, money, money. What makes you so sure? What makes you so sure? Soul animal. Arto, you've just uh, brought out this album called uh, The Subtle Body, I'll say the English translation. And um, pe- for people who know your work from before, it's a bit of a surprise. It's kind of a Brazilian album, isn't it? Why? Well, there have been Brazilian elements in my music all along. This particular record came out this way because uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto, whose label I recorded it for, asked me to do a bossa nova record, and I told him I couldn't really do a bossa record, but i try to do a quiet record for him. And you did grow up in Brazil, didn't you? I grew up in Brazil, yeah. My parents were missionaries. So, I mean, presumably Brazilian music has always been an influence on what you do. Yeah. Now, I mean, the first time I heard you, I heard you playing guitar on the first Lounge Lizards album. Uh, and the music on that is so far away from this. Do you actually play any guitar on this? Uh, a little bit in the background of a couple of songs. But uh, that's not the outstanding characteristic of this record, no. What I really like is that that sometimes the songs sound like sort of classic bossa nova songs, but you kind of subvert them with these weird textures in the background and weird sort of loops and things. That one that does that is Anima Animale. Tell us about right. that song. Well, that's an interesting song. I wrote that song with uh, Vinicius Cantuaria that wrote a lot of the songs with me. Great songwriter and guitar player and percussionist. And Toa Te, who was a member of Delight, And what we did is we sampled a classic bossa nova snare drum part, you know, rim part, a classic samba part, and a pandeiro part, which is the Brazilian tambourine with the skin on it, and some olodum, which is a group of many, many drummers, um, a carnival group from Bahia. We kind of made the groove up by forcing all those different rhythms together, you know. There's a very weird section where it sounds like all the drums go distorted behind your vocals. What's happening there? Right, that's the street drums. The drums record literally in the street. I chose a section where they marched through a kind of a narrow alley and the sound got caught up in its own throat, you know. Kind of, uh. Diana's indifference King David, the roof and the view Love can be taken by force Sometimes you just make up your mind if I were a hypnotist, that veil would do just fine. How much of blood is just water? Two thirds of what covers the earth? Like children who stay up too late. It's no fun unless it bleeds. 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 There are a lot of famous names playing on this album. Bucci Sakamoto, who you mentioned, uh, Brian Eno, Mark Rebo. How did you get all these people involved? Well, Brian was in New York working on a David Bowie record, and uh, it's Rewitch's label, and Rebo and I play together a lot, and, you know... Another one of my favourite songs is My Mind Is Going, which has uh, mm. got a lovely guitar part by Bill Frizzell. It's got a sort of lovely, sinuous melody. Did you work hard on the melodies for this record? Yeah, you know, actually, I wrote that song with Joey and Bill in the studio, and I had a beautiful melody, which Joey and I really liked. (laughs) But Bill kept changing the chords and made it more and more difficult for me to stick to the melody, you know. So that's kind of what's left of the original (laughs) melody. (laughs) Were you happy with the way it turned out? Yeah, yeah. Actually, do you remember the last scene in 2001? That's where I got the title, where the computer is dying and it kind of goes my mind is going (laughs) my mind is going 
to stand in line for you, lining up to lie down for you. My mind is going the way my feet would like to if I slept. Do you like doing best? I don't know. I enjoy performing. I also enjoy being in the studio. In short bursts, I like to be in the studio, but it usually takes longer than you think. Even though I met Tricky in New York, and he works incredibly fast, I'd like to try to do some songs that way. <laughs> you know, I like his work. He's good. Are you interested in sort of drum and bass and yeah? Jungle? I love drum and bass. Yeah, it's uh, the first new groove in a long time that grooves. You know what I mean? It's got some knee action, you know, some hip stuff happening, you know. It's like, it is a groove, you know, as opposed to most of the techno I've heard. I don't want to insult anybody, and which I like to dance to and everything, but in You're a in funny way, I like, the, drum and bass is very close to Brazilian music because we often have things that have those contrasting tempos in Brazilian music, and we have that kind of variation that these guys have and this kind of detail. Often in Brazilian music, you have really subtle tempo variations, which are taboo in most pop music these days, you know. But um, I think really add to listening and dancing pleasure. And I heard a really interesting group called Invisible Scratch Pickles. They're from San Francisco. And they scratch, but they scratch as a group. And they are so intense. They're like virtuosos with turntables. I've never heard anything like it. And for years I've been saying, why doesn't somebody do like a band of guys scratching? And now these guys are doing it. And these guys are almost like jazz musicians or something. This one guy had an acetate with a distorted guitar note on it, and he was soloing in tune. Unbelievable. But it's incredible to hear these guys all scratching at the same time. And they're just great musicians, you know. They're like a great percussionist or something, great drummer, you know, such great time and really intense. <laughs> I mean, your listening spans a huge range of things, doesn't it? You're not only interested in the sort of the jazz area. No, I mean, jazz, I love jazz, but I would say that that's not my primary listening. I mean, I think most musicians listen to all kinds of music, you know. It's interesting right now that the 20-year-old kids in New York are deep into, like, 20th century classical. Isn't that a great fad? Are they? Yeah. I tell you, not only the DJs in like, uh, spooky scene, you know, 
but uh, a lot of young rock bands, they buy all these electronic music records from the 60s, and then they get into other stuff. They start out with Stockhausen, and then they get really, like, everything. David Tudor, and then they get into, like, Feldman and Cage, and they love that stuff. Actually, that's one thing I noticed. Uh, our program went to Berlin recently. We were talking to lots of um, DJs, you know, techno DJs, and they were right. saying that they're so into electronic music now that what they're doing is they're going into electroacoustic music going back to Stockhausen and Pierre Schaeffer and people like that, and then working their way forward. That's right. And they're integrating all these things. So you're getting these fantastic mixes of, you know, the current German techno mixed with all these other things. It's That's a right. fantastic sort of melting pot at the moment. Well, you know, when you're sampling, you're looking for beats or you're looking for timbre or sound. And that music sounds so great because those composers were concentrating often on isolating one or another parameter of music and really diving into it, you know. There's a composer called Chelsea. Do you know his work? Mm. He's one of my favorites, you know. And Long some, sort of one note for five yeah, minutes. Yeah, but it's but, more like he takes changing. a note and he seems to be kind of holding it up to the light and shifting it around and shaking it from this way and that way. And I wonder how much it weighs. And he seems to be really examining one particular thing. has a kind of a physical effect on me it makes me feel more alive in a funny way in a funny sort of way that's what i feel about the songs on this album that they're, they're explorations of one particular thing they right. all have very distinct personalities to me right tell me about the opening track that it's called four skies it's so simple it's lovely guitar textures right. which sort of develop at the end how did that come to be like that um i wrote that with a guy called amadeo pace who's in this great rock band called blonde redhead Amadeus is Italian, you know, and there's a certain kind of Italian approach to kind of lyrical harmonies or something. I don't know, quite know how to express it, but it's a very Italian thing, you know. I mean, even the worst sounding Italian pop is often really gorgeous in a certain way. You know, it'll be this awful drum machines and these tacky synthesizer sound, you know, bah! but there'll be something kind of melodically or harmonically really beautiful about it, right? And, um, we wrote the song together, you know, banging it out, his chords, my melody, you know, kind of shaping the words around and stuff. Then we just recorded it like that. His guitar, my voice. We loved it. Then Brian came into the studio and Brian loved it too. And because there was so much room for him to fool Brian around. Brian Eno. Yeah. So he added all this chorus. So then Amadeo came back into the studio to hear it and hated what, you know, had done, you know. So I said, okay, first half of the song, plain. Second half of the song, we use Brian's effect. One sky was orange, some skies are gray, or a deep dark blue that gave blue its name. A sky like a room at the top of a Sunset on a sweater 
Why do we feel like it might break? I see the And playing sweetly out of that Arto Lindsay interview. That was a track from his new album, O Corpo Sutil, called Four Skies, and that album's available on Ryko Disc. <laughs> 